was uh, born in the 1940s, uh, in the lower part of the Abijogan Road, uh, Sackville Inn. And, um, and my dad was an old time fiddler, and so I guess probably I heard fiddle music from a very early age. And um, my dad played a lot of dances in the Sackville area, and so when I got to be about six years old, uh, I uh, had enough uh, musical talent at that time that uh, I started playing dances and at the Bay Vert Community Hall. And um, that was my first public appearance, I guess you might say. So, um, And then um, I, I was playing mandolin more at the dances with my dad. Uh, he played the fiddle and he usually had a guitar player or a piano player. And uh, then uh, uh, he worked on the railway and um, of course we had these regular dances and he would often say to me, well Ivan, I guess you've got to go and play the dance tonight, the whole dance, I've got to go and do my job. So there I was, maybe eight years old, nine years old, uh, going to these dances and playing for four or five hours a, a night. And uh, so that was my beginning experience with the music business, I guess you might say. And uh, then uh, uh, eventually uh, met up with a gentleman by the name of Del Delner Wheaton, uh, who played guitar and he liked to play. And so about 1949, uh, he and I kind of get together and we started playing uh, dances with my dad. And then a few years later, uh, we formed a, a, a country band called the Golden Valley Boys. And that lasted through the middle 1950s and uh, uh, we played all over Eastern Canada. Uh, we did uh, um, a recording, uh, a, a single uh, in Halifax through the Rodeo Recording Company 1958 uh, in which our vocalist uh, Ron Goodwin uh, recorded a couple of his own compositions and one being the Hank Williams Speaking from Heaven which he had written right after Hank Williams passed away. And um, that was uh, a number one hit on many radio stations, I'll tell you, uh, in the latter part of the 1950s. I played a lot of, uh, uh, with the Golden Valley Boys then, as well as dances, as well as attended school. Graduated from Sackville High School in 1958 and followed that up with uh, five years at uh, Mount Allison University, uh, doing a couple of degrees. Uh, after which, in 1964, I, um, I went into teaching. And my first and only job, actually, was uh, teaching at Salisbury Regional High School and eventually JMA Armstrong. I started teaching in Salisbury in 1967, I believe. And at that time, Ivan was already there teaching, and uh, he had. Um, uh, he was in a different building than I was in, but we often met together for meetings and so on. And uh, gradually I learned that uh, he played music, and it was fiddle music. And I had a love for fiddle music, uh, mostly because my, my folks had uh, Don Messer and Earl Mitten albums at home, so we'd listen to those. And then I used to go to the old-time square dances in Norton, and Harold O'Donnell was the fiddler. So. I had a love for the music, and then when I discovered that he played fiddle, I asked him, uh, can you play this tune, and that tune, and that tune, all tunes off these old albums we had at home. Yes, 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 I could play those. So again, eventually uh, he took me to Sackville to visit his family, and they got the fiddles out, and yes, he could play. So I thought, well, this looks like fun, and maybe I could learn to uh, chord along with the piano, and be a part of the team, which uh, with a great deal of patience on his part because now I'm a beginner and he's been playing a long time. So uh, uh, anyway, I learned the chords and uh, just became part of what he was doing.
course, that led us into um, uh, practicing and getting ready for fiddling contests and for some public appearances. And so um, um, then in 1970, of course, we were married. And from that, of course, uh, our music has uh, just expanded tremendously. And of course, that led to recordings and uh, uh, taking our music uh, across Canada down through the States. And um, she's been a great addition, and, uh, and uh, we uh, enjoy each other's company very much. I first met Ivan back in about 1983, I believe, and uh, we were out at a, um, a fiddle workshop out in Salisbury, and uh, I had just purchased my first fiddle out there from a, a local maker, uh, from, actually from Fredericton. And uh, so anyhow, I asked, before I bought it, I asked Ivan if he would try the fiddle, because I knew about him, although I didn't know him. So he tried it out and uh, uh, kind of gave it a seal of approval, and so I bought it. And uh, that led me into uh, going to see Ivan to get some lessons, because I was just starting out new. And so I went to him for, for lessons, and. That just carried on for about 32, 33 years until t today. Well, uh, I've been involved in uh, doing a bluegrass radio program since 1977. Started in Amherst in 1977. It's bluegrass and old time music program. So I knew Ivan's father, of course. First, uh, Ivan lived in, uh, or Ivan's father lived in Sackville. That was Curtis. And then uh, when Ivan started uh, producing recordings, which in 1979, I guess, that's when I became uh, more familiar with Ivan and we were using his music on our radio program. So he continued to make recordings, I guess, after that. And uh, the uh, next thing was a bluegrass recording and uh, he had me do the liner notes for that. And so we've been in pretty close contact with Ivan ever since. He's, he's produced quite a few recordings and we're still playing his, his music on the radio down there. Uh, between 1980 and the present day, a lot of things really uh, came out uh, in our music, um, uh, not only through uh, recordings, um, uh, between 15 and 20 recordings we produced in that time, uh, we uh, continue right on from the 80s into the 90s up to now. Um, we um, have done, uh, I did a recording with uh, our great Canadian icon Ned Landry uh, in 2000 uh, and we put out a recording called Generations mm -hmm. and uh, that became very popular. Um, I did another album called uh, Connections um, uh, in the early 2000s and uh, it was kind of a, uh, a different kind of project and not the music that I normally played, but it was a lot of my own compositions. And uh, I used uh, uh, musicians from Scotland and K Kentucky to uh, influence that music. And that has gone over very well. I've done a couple of recordings with the Sussex Avenue fiddlers uh, through the years. Uh, we've also put books of music together of our tunes and uh, compositions. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of things of uh, interesting things have happened. We built a new home uh, in 2004 and 5, moved in March of 2005. And uh, in all of those years, uh, we built it kind of with a music theme and uh, where we could have uh, house concerts, have um, groups of people come in uh, to spend time with us musically. Uh, we have bus tours come into our home. Uh, we give them a meal, then a kitchen party afterwards. We've, uh, well, we're right now in a room that I wanted that to be part of our home, uh, a memorabilia room, kind of giving a history of our music through the years. People seem to have enjoyed that very much. We've even had workshops done here, musical workshops. Uh, uh, just uh, 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 an all-around kind of musical home, so uh, uh, it's been an interesting part of this. Um, when we decided to build our home out here in Upper Coverdale, 
um, we, we thought that was a wonderful opportunity to uh, make space in our home to, to display a lot of the pictures and um, all the stuff that we've collected for 60 years, 70 years. And uh, before that, we had a little bit of it displayed in our uh, rec room on Sussex Avenue, but the rest was all in boxes and stuff. And so we thought, well, you know, it's only fair. People took the time and uh, wanted to present stuff to us. We, we shouldn't, shouldn't be hidden in a box. So it's, uh, it's really nice. We do come down every once in a while and just kind of wander around and it uh, sometimes can bring a tear to your eye because some of these people are gone now and uh, people that you, f you became or we became close to because of our music and developed good friendships. But uh, it's still, it's, uh, it's very rewarding. It's, uh, I guess we just enjoy it. Uh, well, Ivan, Ivan is the best in whatever he does because he works to be the best and uh, he's very patient, very knowledgeable and, and very helpful. And so you always feel at home uh, when you're dealing with him mm -hmm. and if you make a mistake you don't have to worry because uh, you know, it's not going to be magnified and all that. So he's a, a, an excellent teacher and the young people are you know, the shining examples of that, the young people that, who have started out with him and have gone on to be great players and they got their beginning with Ivan. I think of Stacy and Reed and, and there are more besides her. Yeah. I'm always giving advice to younger folks. Uh, sometimes they come and ask me questions or they ask me to work with them on a composition. Um, I've had that done frequently. Uh, through the uh, 80s, through the 1980s, I did a lot of teaching of uh, both young and older folks, uh, but we got, you, we got the younger generation, I think, going in this area, in the Moncton area, and um, I had some great young people that uh, uh, came along, and I, I was using the, what they call the Suzuki method, and it was basically the way I learned to play in the beginnings. And um, uh, one period of time in the 80s, I had as many as 80 students uh, that I would see each week, either solo or in, in groups, small groups. And um, um, a, a number of these have gone on to do some teaching too uh, throughout the, the Moncton area. And, Probably we have some of the greatest fiddling of young people in this area than uh, anywhere across Canada, you know, and I'm glad to have been part of that. There, there are many, many memories, uh, not only with traveling with Ivan as a solo act. We, uh, we worked together and have traveled across Canada and throughout the States. And then there was the bluegrass band that uh, I was active in, and sometimes I did uh, sound for them. Uh, the bass player and I, Tom, Tom Johnson, uh, took a course in Halifax over a period of few weeks, so kind of made ourselves aware of how that all works. And uh, then I'm also piano accompanist uh, for the Sussex Avenue Fiddlers. I have uh, been official piano accompanist at various contests, like the Maritime Fiddle Festival contest. And uh, we've, we've done lots of wonder, wonderful traveling. Uh, the Bluegrass Band took a couple of trips across Canada back 2000, 2002, and that was pretty exciting. So as, as a teenager, all those kinds of things never entered my mind. I thought, just, it just wasn't there. <laughs>
if we went to Manitoba, or if we went to British Columbia, or if we went yeah. to parts of Ontario. Uh, they knew the kind of music they were going to get. And uh, But I guess every artist, uh, you know, has their moments when they get a little wondering what's going to happen. Uh, you, you get your nerves kind of take over a little bit. But that's good, yeah. uh, because then when you get on stage, you, you're, you're ready to go. And, and I, I always uh, feel out an audience early and I like to involve an audience in what I do. Uh, Vivian and I sometimes will have a, a program all set up to play for uh, the people and we make changes throughout the program. All I say is key of D or key of G and she doesn't know what we're going to do but she's ready. Yeah, yeah well he's, he's the perfect example of uh, the old time East Coast style of fiddling, I would say. Uh, there's many different styles of fiddling across the country, but uh, Ivan is a, is a very good example of, of what we have to offer here on the East Coast. Hmm. Uh, Ivan has been a, a supporter of uh, what I've been doing as well in, in the uh, radio business. Uh, uh, 10th anniversary of our radio program, Ivan uh, presented me with a nice uh, portrait that he had someone in Moncton uh, paint of me sitting behind the microphone, uh, things like that. So Ivan's been a, a great supporter uh, of our program as well over, over the years. Yeah. Uh, it's a different uh, processing now, a different uh, kind of business, the recording business, and uh, uh, that was one of our main things back in the late 70s and through the 80s and early 90s was uh, the, that LP or that cassette or that CD, you know. Uh, you, uh, you sold a lot of them uh, wherever you played and of course uh, radio stations gave, you, gave us a lot of airplay then as well. So He was never too keen on having an outside management team and I think because in the beginning there probably wasn't much to manage. So uh, we, we came into it gradually, uh, got some help, of course, uh, uh, with some, some friends that uh, showed an interest in what we were doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was, went to a lot of workshops and seminars, uh, went to ECMA, and they had some great instructors for their various sessions, and read music magazines, and just tried to keep ourselves up to date and uh, figure out what we should be doing. And I think it's, it's worked reasonably well. We um, had to also get up to speed on computers and uh, all the, the social media. And I was just talking with gentleman uh, Wilson a little earlier. Uh, when it comes to all social media, it's, you know, you, you've got to run pretty fast to keep up with all the changes. We do have a young lady in our office, Cheryl, who's pretty darn good on the computer stuff. So that's a huge help. I had often through the years w wondered whether I should have gone into music solely, but then I got to thinking about the reality of things. It was, uh, you know, if I have my teaching degrees and so on, and at the end I would certainly uh, have a pension type of thing. Uh, the music, uh, I would say when I started my uh, recordings back in the late 70s, the business was different. It wa wasn't really a true business and Vivian and I uh, learned a lot of the business ourselves and with the help of some very important, uh, uh, very important people, uh, we, uh, we learned a lot of these things on our own. We never had management. Uh, we managed our own uh, affairs uh, music-wise. <laughs> That's one good thing about doing uh, uh, bluegrass, an old-time music program, or any, any music program, I guess, for that matter. 
you get to know the artists, most of them, and, and uh, become friends with them, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's just a great, great thing to be able to do that. Uh, you, you find out that they're just ordinary people, most of them like, like we all are, I guess. So, yeah. We've attended most of the house concerts, except the one on this past Sunday afternoon that was J.P. Cormier was snowed in. Uh, I guess he was here for last night, but yes, yeah, so we've attended most of the house concerts, and uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very good uh, thing that they're doing here, uh, helping promote uh, some of the music that's going by or, or nearby, or some of our local music as well. Uh, it was nice when I get calls from the West and they say we're going to fly you out and I can say make it two tickets. My wife's coming to accompany me so uh, in that way she never gets left behind and she enjoys the music very much and uh, uh, really helps to promote us tremendously uh, through her knowledge with uh, the uh, computer and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it's been a, a, a great relationship. I guess I, I always believe that things are as they were meant to be and uh, I feel very blessed that I was able to learn to play piano well enough to accompany Ivan and uh, I don't regret for a moment all the time we've put into it. We always kept uh, kind of our priorities in, in the right order, our, our family and then our jobs and then what was left time-wise was for music and now of course we're retired and we have more time for music. But uh, I, I think we're, we're really happy that things went the way they did. We're, we're very blessed. I, I guess um, energy-wise and so on, I, I guess I, I have new compositions, uh, probably 20-some new compositions that should be recorded. Um, the, the recording business today is not like it was when I started. Um, um, if, that, if that may come, I have nothing uh, thought out that I, how I want to do it, but uh, it, it's possible. And uh, I might want to put a, a, another book of my tunes together with a, with a CD and uh, with a recording. Uh, I've been 70 years in it, and uh, um, I guess I've told a number of people that uh, I won't put the fiddle down until they put me down. So um, I, I think it, it'll always be there. There's always an interest. Uh, I love learning a new tune once in a while. I love trying to do a few different things with the tunes that I do know. Um, uh, uh, well, th this present year is going to be one of our uh, big years in music. Uh, we play mainly local now rather than do a lot of traveling. And a lot of people come and see us too now at our home, so um, I, I think it's there to stay for sure.